Section 5.2, Future Value of an Annuity. If we have a sequence of equal payments made at equal periods of time, we call this an annuity. If payments are made at the end of the time period, such as the end of each quarter, the end of each month, the end of each year, and if the frequency of payments is the same as the frequency of compounding, the new annuity is called an ordinary annuity. The time between payments is called the payment period. The time from the beginning of the first payment to the end of the first period is called the term. The future value of annuity, the final sum on a deposit, is defined as the sum of the compounded amounts of all the payments compounded to the end of the term. So why would we ever choose annuities? We would choose annuities if we wanted to save for a large purchase such as a vehicle, college, or down payment on a home or provide monthly payments for retirement. The future value of an ordinary annuity is as follows. S is equal to R, which is how much we're paying per period. Please change the I on your um, on, on your sheet to R over M. I is the same as R over M if you're looking in the book, but to keep everything kind of uh, the same as all the rest of our, uh, our notes, please change it to R over M. So after we change the I to the R over M, again, the big R stands for the period payment. So how much we're making, putting into this account per period. Are we making a payment of $500, $199, whatever that payment is. The little r in both instances on the bottom and the top here are the rate. What is our interest rate? The m is how, how often is it compounded uh, per year? Um, is it compounded quarterly? Is it compounded uh, annually? But how often is it compounded per year? And that's the same um, M of above. And then finally the T is how many years? So it's an extension off of compound interest from the last section. So let's say Mary Camden is an athlete who believes that her playing career will last seven years. To prepare for her future, she deposits $24,000 at the end of each year. So her payment is $24,000. And she's going to do this for seven years in an account that pays 6% compounded annually. How much will she have on deposit after seven years? So having the formula off to the side here, um, we're going to say that she will have in her account so first of all, we're putting $24,000 in this account. According to our formula, we need to place 1 plus the rate. And remember, you turn a rate into a uh, decimal. So 0 0.06 divided by M, which is how often it's compounded. It's compounded annually, so we're just going to divide by 1. Close this first parenthesis. We have, uh, we bring the one up how often it's compounded and for how many years, which is seven. Then we have to subtract one for our numerator. All over, again, the rate over how often it's compounded. So if we simplify this, we will get 24,000 times... Well, 0 0.06 divided by 1 is just 0 0.06, and if we add 1 to that, we'll have 1.06. Uh, 1 times 7 is 7. Subtract 1 all over uh, 0.6. So using your calculator, if you were to take uh, 1.06 to the 7th power, subtract 1, divide that by 0 0.6, and multiply that by 24,000, you will see at the end of seven years, we will get $201,452.10. But what if instead of investigating, investing $24,000 at the end of each year, 
Suppose she decides to deposit $2,000 at the end of each month. So we're going to compound it monthly. Still for seven years, still getting a 6% interest rate. How much will she have after seven years? So instead of depositing a lump sum at the end of the year, we're going to deposit uh, monthly. So the amount that we're going to have is going to be our payment, which is $2,000 times the quantity 1 plus still 0 0.06. This time we're compounding monthly, so we're going to divide by 12. And our power is going to be 12 times 7 years, and then subtract 1. All over 0 0.06 divided by 12 here. If we simplify a little bit, we'll have $2,000 times... 0.06 divided by 12 is 0 0.005, so if we add 1, it's 1 0.005. 12 times 7 is 84, and then subtract 1, all over 0 0.005. So if we take, using our calculator, and take 1.005 to the 84th power, subtract 1, divide that by 0 .005 and multiply by 2,000, we will see at the end of seven years she will have $208,147.85. Clearly it would be better if she could do this monthly instead of one lump sum as she would end up with more money in the end of seven years. A sinking fund is a fund formed by periodically setting aside money for the gradual repayment of a debt. So this is the, um, again I have that I, let's replace that I just as we did on the first slide with rate over how often it's compounded so that we kind of keep the same letters. So this is the, R is the payment we have to make. Again, R is the rate on both instances. M is how often compounded. And then T is how many years. And then finally this large S is the future value. So how much do we want to have in the future? How much money do we want to save for the future? So Beth's goal is to accumulate $130,999 in 20 years. So that's our goal. That's our future value. Uh, at 7.2% compounded monthly, use the sinking payment fund uh, formula to find the payment that she would have to make every month in order to achieve this, this $130,999 goal. So the payment she would have to make is equal to how much she would like to have times our rate over, so our rate, 0 0.072. It's compounded monthly, so divide that by 12. All over 1 plus our rate over compounded monthly to the power of how often we compound by how many years, oops, 20 years, and then we subtract one. So let's simplify a little bit here. Uh, we'll have $130,999. If we were to take 0 .072 and divide it by 12, we would get 0 0.006. Knowing that, we would have 1 plus 0 0.006, so 1.006 to the power of 240. 12 times 20 is 240, and then subtract 1. So if we multiply our tops together, 130,999 times 0 0.006, we'd end up with 785.994, rounded, of course all over 1.006 to the 240th power is 4.2025 rounded. Subtract 1 
and if we were to divide that all out, and you can verify using your calculator, the payment that she would have to make monthly is $245,000, I'm sorry, $245.43, that she would have to pay monthly into this account, or then she would end up with $130,999 at the end of 20 years. Let's find the quarterly payment needed to produce $13,500 in 14 years at 3.75% interest compounded quarterly. So again, we want to know how much we need to pay into the account. We want to make $13,500. We have an account that gives us 3.75% interest. If we turn that into a decimal, we'll have 0, 0.0. 375 and it's compounded quarterly so we'll divide that by 4 all over 1 plus 0 0.0375 divided by 4 raise that to the fourth power and we're having it in the account for 14 years and then subtract 1 0 0.0375 divided by 4 gives us 0 0.009375 we divide that by 1.009375 so we just add 1 to it and that's raised to 4 times 14 is the 56th power and then subtract 1 going ahead using the order of operations multiplying the top taking the 1.009375 to the 56th power, we'll end up with something around 126.5625 in the numerator rounded and 0.68633 rounded for our denominator. So when we divide those, we'll end up with $184.40 is the amount that should be put into the account quarterly in order to reach our goal. So thus far, we've been talking about ordinary annuities where payments are made at the end of each time period. We can determine annuities due, which is annuities in which we make the payment at the beginning of each time period. So to do this, we'll treat each payment as if it were made at the end of the preceding period, which we will find one additional period. To compensate for this, we'll just subtract one payment at the end. So again, R is the payment, the big R. So then we'll subtract a payment from the end. R again is the little r is the rate. M is how often compounded. I'm sorry, this N should be a T, and we know time stands for how many years. So find the future value of an annuity due if payments of $500 are made at the beginning of each quarter for seven years in an account paying 6% compounded quarterly. So S equals the amount of our payment is $500. We'll have 1 plus our interest rate, 0 0.06, over 4, since we're compounding quarterly, to the power of how often we're compounding for 7 years, and then we add 1 to that, and then subtract 1 from whatever we get from the whole whopping thing. And on the bottom, we have 0 0.06 divided by 4 again. And then whatever we get for all of that, we'll subtract one payment. So 500, 0 0.06 divided by 4 is 0 0.015. So if we add 1 to that, we'll have 1.015. 4 times 7 is 28. Adding 1 gives us 29. And then we'll subtract 1. All over... 0 0.015 as we know that 0 0.06 divided by 4 is 0 0.015 and then we subtract 500 
taking uh, 1.015 to the 29th power and subtracting 1 gives us 0 0.53998. Verify using your calculator. We can divide our decimals, giving us about 35.9987. And of course, that's rounded. And if you multiply that number by 500, we get $17,999.35. Subtract one payment. So if we were to pay at the beginning of each quarter, we would end up with seventeen thousand four hundred ninety nine dollars and thirty five cents let's find the future value of annuity due with five three hundred twenty five dollars made at the beginning of each month for five years in an account paying three point three percent compounded monthly so again, our formula, so our payment is $325, I'm going to multiply that by 1 plus our decimal 0 .003, 0 0.033 for our interest rate, divided by, we're compounding monthly, so divided by 12 to the power of uh, how often we're compounding, 5 years, And then we add 1 to that, but then subtract 1 from the whole thing when we get that far. All divided by 0 0.033 over 12 again, and then subtract 1 payment. This is equal to $325. Uh, 0 0.033 divided by 12 is 0 0.00275, so if we add 1 to that, 12 times 5 is 60, plus 1 is 61. We subtract 1, divide that by 0 0.00275, so 0 0.033 divided by 12, and then subtract $325 from that. If we were to take 1.00275 to the 61st power and subtract 1, we would end up with 0 0.182737, excuse me, and verify using your calculator, and of course that's rounded. If we divide uh, 0 0.182737 by 0 0.00275 and then multiply that quantity by 325, we end up with $21,552.66, but of course we have to subtract one payment. So we would end up with $21,227.66 if we were to pay at the beginning of each month versus the end of each month. And this concludes section 5.2. Future value of an annuity.